top teams in the league. Well, let's see what they can do up against Canisius College here as game number one is underway. And uh, what are you expecting with uh, that bit of knowledge on your side now, um, Seth? Well, it seems at this point that University of Colorado are going to have a bit of an issue with consistency. So if they're able to really show up, bring it to Canisius College, who is definitely no slouch as this will be a nearly shot off the crossbar. Starvin going to try and get the double tap himself. And already Colorado's coming out with an absolute banger of an offense. Oh, but just yeah, exactly. as I say that. Oh, man. Oh, wow. All right. That was quick. Uh, Canisius coming out with the quick conversion there. Yeah, they're coming out strong and they're coming out right away. I'm Stuff. Stuff's in the back of the net. 425 left on the clock. That's a very nice shot. For sure, and especially for a team that was coming out so early with offense with Colorado. Definitely not one that you want to see slip through, but an opportunity might present itself here as Starvin can make it to the ball. No, a humble potato going to send it downfield. Colorado going to have possession once again. And you can see that the mechanics are there from the Colorado side. They have a good game plan with the demos coming through. It's whether or not they can convert so far. Starvin going to put that one on target to tie up this game with about four minutes left. Starvin is not starving for goals whatsoever. He's found his and he's fed, but there's a lot more time left on the clock. Maybe he can feed some more great opener to you know wipe off that lead from Canisius Colorado just from the outskirts I definitely see that they have a bit of a better offensive scheme so hopefully Canisius can hold it together on the defensive half try and play through the midfield on the potato that is a great start right there but there is no response stuff he is going to be there and that's a fantastic pass over to GLX going to be coming through and giving Canisius the lead once again. We have an absolute barn burner right now. Both these teams have been pretty evenly matched. Yeah, Glixie finding that pass after I'm stuffed. Double taps that one off of the wall. And that is how they grab the 2-1 lead. But it's 2-2 right away. The answer is coming back from Colorado. And I mean... They can't hold on to a lead for that much longer, but I mean, Colorado just hasn't had a lead period so far yet, so they need to work on that as well. Yeah, definitely not one you want to see, but of course, you know, I'm sure Colorado will take it with that kickoff goal. That's a nice challenge though, Starvin, of course, with that defense. Clover sending it back down the field, and we have some good transitional passing plays from Colorado right now. Can he get that one on target? Yes, he will. What a phenomenal pass from Colorado. Flover finding that one after Trix gets a nice touch on it. 40 boost only to Flover's name and finds the nice shot was a little bit higher than the ball was and shot it down because of it. Very much uh, surprised the defense there and they take the lead and as you say a barn burner because only 100 seconds have been played so far and already five goals. That's a goal every 20 seconds. Yeah, for sure. And I definitely don't blame Canisius for giving up that goal. Uh, so easily because Flover kind of knocked it over to the side and you thought that he would go for the other rotate tricks. What an angle. Fantastic play from him. Colorado starting to run away with this one. Colorado got a 4-2 lead now, but as I said, once again, they've been scoring at a rate of once every uh, 20 seconds. They need to continue uh, to play good defense though and not let Canisius get a goal here because they allow Canisius back into this game, then they might be in trouble. Yeah, but so far, Starvin, he's going to fake around, but he gets the save and himself a tricks. He somehow isn't able to put it on target. He tries to fake out the defenders, but it was a little too much to ask for. Colorado absolutely putting so many shots on target, playing around, and Starvin is going to be able to convert on that one as well. We're not even at halftime in Colorado secure a 5-2 lead. 5-2, and at this rate, the game is going to finish at 10-4, uh, to four, which is just an insane score. Absolute, oh my goodness. Uh, everyone's got hot wheels at the moment, right? Everyone's got... Uh, the, the goal scoring touch it seems and uh, everyone wants a piece of the pie oh my goodness though uh, four goals in a row there for 
Colorado, so that is a good sign for them. A bad sign, though, for Canisius. Yeah, Canisius just needs to be able to read the offense a little bit better from the Colorado side, as this one might score as well. Trix, he's going to be there. He's going to stuff it on through. Colorado running away with this one, and Canisius having a hard time dealing Colorado pressure, kind of getting outplayed in the midfield quite a bit. I noticed in that last goal specifically, there was just kind of two defenders that were leisurely passed in the midfield. So hopefully they can patch this stuff up and whether or not they make a comeback is a whole other story, but definitely some lessons to take away into the next game. Yeah, 100% for sure. I mean, Woo! at this point, ooh, wow. Canisius are still in the game. They just need to find good defense and a bit of offense. That's a great pass from Stuff. And Stuff's been the one who, to create the offense. He scored the first goal and he's assisted on the other two. Very well played by him once again to get the pass over to his wide open teammate and his teammates doing what they can with that ball. And what they have been doing has been very excellent. Yeah, especially that was a fantastic read too from Potato. I was kind of surprised with how early he went up for it as well. Of course, at this level, you want to be able to make those kind of reads, except that one. Uh, definitely don't want to make that one. Ooh, this might be an awkward situation. Potato going to have to use a lot of boost for this, especially on the defensive side when Duff doesn't have any to work with. Flover, he might make this work. No, he'll be knocked away, and Kanisha is able to find a little bit of a break here for resetting for another offensive push. Oh, Flover. I got to take a second look at this one. I want to know how this one went in. So he gets the challenge, knocks it up, and just gets the perfect angle past the rotating players. That is clean. Clean indeed. And oh my goodness, that is very beautiful. With uh, 75 seconds left on the clock, there's te 10 goals on the board. My goodness, that's a it's a an absolute shooting range. Yeah, for sure. I'm not sure what Starvin's trying to do here. It seems like he's pretty committed on getting some sort of ceiling shot, but he just can't get it right now. Oh, but still, that is a great pass. Can they convert on it? No. Clover, not able to convert and have a good angle for it. I'm stuffed. Gonna knock it to the back wall. Flover will be there for it. Humble Potato gonna go up, gonna keep it in the orange half. He'll have to do it again here. If someone can react to it, click C. Not gonna be able to get to it in time. Fantastic pass to Flover over to Trix. Oh my lord, what a play from the Colorado side. Look how quick this is in transition. Fantastic stuff. Beautiful, beautiful team play there. And they're running away with this one. Eight to three. No mercy being shown, though, by Colorado here. Absolute stomping over there. Eight goals. Normally, you wouldn't see uh, the offense, uh, the defense in that case, then score three goals afterwards. But that's exactly what the Canisius have done. They've scored three goals against this Colorado team, despite the fact that they led an eight. Colorado doing a really good job. Humble Potato. Oh, that's a fantastic stay, save from Starvin. Now, obviously, some lessons that Canisius will want to take away from this. Just, I, I, in my opinion, I think midfield pressure is going to be the big thing and just finding a way to maintain your defense because I feel like there was a lot of defensive flubs where kind of uh, Canisius were tripping over each other a little bit and finding a, having a hard time finding a way to get out of their zone. But regardless, Colorado going to walk away with that game one in an absolute just boxing match between these two teams. Absolute boxing match indeed. And I mean, the punches were thrown, but the punches on the side of Canisius were just weaker. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I definitely think, especially with Canisius, they definitely had some ideas. I think that goal with Humble Potato definitely worked out for them, but it is relative to what Colorado is doing pretty rudimentary, right? Like it's, it's uh, good fundamental stuff, but 
Colorado is just, they're bringing out the playbook for this one. They know how to react to each other. Well, they're doing the infield passes in the midfield. They're doing, you know, these long transition passes like that gorgeous last one in the last minute. Right. So they're doing a lot more offensively. That just doesn't seem like Canisius is ready for, or at least they're having a hard time adapting to the speed. So it'll be interesting to see what they can pull out next game to showcase that adaptation. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Colorado can continue on this onslaught on the offense, right? Because uh, their defense looked a little bit shaky at times, but when it came to their offense, it was all guns blazing. And, I mean, let's see what they can do in the second game here. As we get going into game two, I hope that Colorado can continue with what they're doing because it is some very entertaining Rocket League that... Of course, uh, especially after our delayed two games, I definitely want to see. So, see what they can pull out here. Colorado already on the offense, putting Canisius in the back burner a little bit, forcing them to play a little awkward. Starvin, he might get another shot here, just high. As it looks like Canisius is going to try and make something happen in transition. I'm stuffed, not able to get a good touch on that. 4.30 left on the clock, and... Again, Canisius finding themselves trying to score in transition, but not getting anything. Not finding anything, and that's a good save by Trix on Glixie's shot there. The shots are coming in. They're kind of quality shots, let's be honest, right? We can't kid ourselves. Uh, that uh, they, they were pretty quality, just like that one, but Stuff uh, makes a good save there. And, uh, both uh, teams having their opportunities, and it's very, very good for for Canisius, but they need to play the whole five minutes this way. Yeah, and I almost was wondering, you were mentioning the quality of the shot. I mean, Humble Potato was still in net. Maybe he didn't have the boost, but I would have loved to see a bump come through, or at least a demo attempt. You know, you have a person who carried it all the way over to the net, and someone who's going for the secondary shot off the rebound. Send someone to go for the demo. Send, you know, he's already in net. There's only one defender in. Try and get the demo so you can at least have that opportunity. Unfortunately, it doesn't come through, and just as I say that, Starvin, does get that bump, but it won't be converted. 3.30 left on the clock, we are still scoreless. Yeah, that was an amazing bump by Starvin, but the humble potato finds himself in the correct position at the correct time. And it's still a deadlocked game, nil, nil, 3.13 left on this clock here. It's ticking Ooh. down, what a save by, oh my goodness, stuff. That looked like a save, but it just kept on rolling in. Clover yeah. finds another one. Yeah, I, I just think I'm stuff just didn't get enough uh, sauce on that ball, if you will. Really, he does get the touch, but it's not enough to keep it out of the net. And, you know, Clover just coming in all the way from across the pitch to make that touch work. And they might have another opportunity here. Starvin, unfortunately, whiffs that one. Clover, can he get on target? Yes, he will, but Humble Potato going to pinch it off that post to get the save. Keeping Canisius in this game. So far, they have struggled with trying to get it out of their half. Let's see if they can finally make something with this opportunity. Let's see if they can. Stuff gets the ball cleared out. Trix puts it over to Flover. Down to Starvin. But that is going to be wide. And Humble Potato is going to get the ball cleared out after two touches. Flixie gets a good 50 and gets Jeez. bumped. Gets sent to Narnia. And the ball is going to be cleared back out the other way. And that's just how quick things can turn around. That was a two-on-one advantage. And then suddenly the bump on Potato was not so humble. He was not able to 50 properly. Glixie got sent up in the air as well. It's a two-nothing game. That is when you kind of just have to rotate. It, it sometimes is worth it to chase the ball like that, try and get around. Uh, you know, the attacking player so you can maybe disrupt him before he gets in a nice 1v1 position. But if you have a time where your teammate can get a good challenge on it, you know, even if it knocks over to your corner or whatever, you take it. Otherwise, you have awkward situations like that where you end up accidentally own going because you're disrupting a 50 and putting it, you know, in your own net. So an unfortunate situation from Canisius, one that definitely could be be repaired with a bit more communication. Colorado continue with their lead. Yeah, Trix passes it back over to Starvin, and he's going to pick up this ball in his own net. 
That's gonna be cleared back to Trix, who's gonna get... Ooh, that's a bad touch, though. Directly towards the center. Trix is gonna pick it back up. That's a very good team play. They actually repaired that somehow, some way. And the demo comes in. Starvin! Oh, no! And Stuff gets fooled by the slow shot. 79 seconds on the clock. It's 3 nothing. Ah, uh, Canisius is, excuse me, Colorado is just playing with their food at this point. Trix just totally soul reading the Canisius defense right there with a perfect pass after faking out the two defenders. Fantastic stuff from Colorado. And as time whittles on, it seems like this slowly coming out of reach for the Canisius side. 70 seconds left on the clock here. And plenty of time to score three goals right if you can find them back to back to back but against this colorado team their defense has really bulked down they look a lot better on the field right now oh yeah the uh, defense is definitely tightened up well well you know that what being said. that being said stuff your stuff he's stuff he's, he's done stuff you know he's done, stuff. he's done a lot of stuff for this team i think he's assisted and or scored on every single goal for his team so far and there's a good reason for that because he finds a very very strong uh positions and hits the ball in very uh, good ways right he hits them with power but also with accuracy right you, he gets that ball where he wants it to go and that's very important not every player can do that especially uh, at these players levels not everyone uh, exactly gets the touch they want yeah, for sure. And right now I'm just kind of holding my breath at this defense from Canisius right now because a lot of it is kind of you have Humble Potato who's knocking off the sidewall expecting a quick reactive clear down the field, but no one there to show up until it's a little bit too late and you have a double commit coming through. So just these simple defensive mistakes that on the surface might not seem like a lot, but then you realize, oh yeah, they're giving another opportunity for Colorado to score. So despite that, Colorado will take game two and go up 2-0 in this series. Canisius, once again, they continue to have a hard time penetrating this defense and dealing with the Colorado onslaught that is their offense. Colorado is very strong uh, on the offensive side, but I think they actually played better in this game than they did in game number one. Yes, they scored five less goals, but honestly, I'm looking at the goals against and how weak uh, what is it, their defense was in game number one, right? It's not uh, that the goals they let in were soft. It's that they weren't in position to be able to make those saves when yeah. in other situations, right, had they been in position, they might have been able to stop one of those three goals in, in the first game, right? Yeah, and, and uh, to be fair, even with the goal that Kanisha scored, I mean, let's be honest, it kind of just came out of Colorado being out of position a little bit. And, you know, with a lot of, I think Colorado will have a tendency to, maybe over aggress at times, leave their back half a little bit too open, not having that third man uh, as far back as he'd probably like to be. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to patch that up. It seems in this game, like it was really tight throughout most of it. And just the reads that Colorado were getting on the Canisius defense were so strong that it just felt like no matter what Canisius did, they were just going to get red and scored on anyway. Yeah, it felt a little bit like uh, like mental chess, right? Like you yeah. you're reading your opponent. Oh well, I I I I know what he could be doing for the ne his next move could be one of fifteen different moves, right? And uh, I'll I'll guess the one that is most likely to occur, right? And yeah. it seems like they just are able to soul read every single time and find exactly the correct one again, perfect position. And whenever they get the, uh, what is it? Whenever Canisius gets the ball cleared out, instantly Colorado has the ball in their in their zone. They don't give it back away. The only yeah. time when the ball is not in their possession is when it's punted away back into their own zone. Otherwise, Colorado just has always has the the upper hand. They always have ball control. Oh. And look <laughs> at that Starvin. He's feeding himself with goals, and this is a feed from his own self. Look at that. You have even three guys coming in to try and defend that, and then it's beat by two. So just a mishmash of cars, you know, in that net, and eventually it gets dunked on through. Nothing, honestly. Can he just, maybe if they... Oh, Jesus, Tricks. Okay, he's going to sneak that one through. 
Maybe if Canisius, you know, try and challenge these balls a little bit earlier, try and not give as much space to Colorado, which I think they are kind of doing a lot. They're, they're playing a little bit passive on the defensive end, which I think, you know, especially if you're not as man mechanically tuned, is very easy to do. But in a situation like this, where having a little bit of aggression uh, in the midfields could, you know, save you from getting scored on like that, it could do a lot for you in the future. And uh, already within the first 46 seconds, right, the time you you get to explain all of that, Colorado's already up three nothing, yeah. right? Uh, they, they they make it look so easy, and Canisius, I mean. They're, they're being left out to dry here, right? It's no, normally you, you'd say, oh, well, th this one player is being left out to dry, but somehow they're all leaving each other out to dry, right? All, all three players are leaving all three players out to dry, which is practically unheard of in the game of Rocky. Oh, 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 oh okay. all right. With the flip reset too, that's gotta hurt. I think at this point, Colorado, they're just kind of styling. They're they're having fun, uh, which I mean, at, at this point, you're up 2-0. You know, you scored the last three times, and even in the games that you did win, you were kind of styling as well. So they're just kind of having fun at this point. Uh, honestly, for Canisius, whatever you can do is just try and just punish Colorado for not respecting you. Force them to respect you in some way. Maybe you'll find a way to get back, but. Unfortunately, just I say that, Trix, he's going to get this flick and the Colorado the 5 0 lead. Look at the style that they're putting. They're putting on a show. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. It's not that it's unheard of, but Colorado, there's a reason I think that they've uh, been beating the top tier teams and Canisius are uh, figuring that one out by uh, via a 5 nothing. I want to say spanking uh, from the first 100 seconds of play. And I feel bad because, it, it, honestly, it feels like Kanisha is relative to the level that they're playing at. Like, they are playing okay. I wouldn't say they're making too many outrageous defensive mistakes. A lot of it just comes down to positioning in my book and, you know, some mechanics. Um, when they're in the offensive zone, you can see it's a little light. They're trying to get reads on where the de uh, defense is going to play. But when it comes to the defensive half, they're just kind of scared. Their, their positioning showcases that they're a little bit scared and that they're trying to play at a quicker speed than they're maybe capable of. So hopefully they can really kind of bring it together. But we're only at halftime, and it's already a 5-0 scoreline. I mean, it's been 5-0 for about a minute now, and... Uh, they, the University of Colorado have slowed down technically, but uh, Canisius College, uh, they, they haven't found anything more really. Now they're in the offensive zone, they're stopping the, the clear outs, but what can they do? They're finding a little bit of offense, but they, I'm stuffed, gets absolutely stuffed from the rear as uh, the demo comes through and uh, absolutely gets cleared out. There's not really anything they can do. There's no respect on the side of Colorado. It doesn't look like they care much. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, because this is, I think, the most time that Canisius has had in the offensive zone. So I'm wondering why. I think, like, uh, Canisius is doing a better job at getting these long clears and actually hitting them. But Colorado lightening up a little bit in the midfield control not playing as aggressive in the offensive zone and you're starting to get some things going here humble potato not able to get that second touch minute and a half left on the clock and Nisius shows no signs of starting a comeback right now this tricks doesn't get that angle on the shot we will get the 50 with stuff Alexi, I want to knock it downfield, but there's no follow-up, and that, that I think is the hardest thing is so far. Oh, stuff. Will this go on through? No, just wide. But yeah, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I mean, at this point, wait, what else? You have yeah. to do the problem, I Oh no. I mean you gotta push at in opportune moments, right? You're trying to to get your opponents to, to become a little bit unnerved, right? Or get a little uncomfortable. And it, it's sort of happening but it's not turning into any goals it's turning into into turnovers and it's turning into a little bit of offense 
but that offense isn't turning into goals, sadly. And they need to score one goal every six seconds at this point just to tie up the game. It just feels like Ganesha's right now. They're not too accurate with their passes. You can see that they're trying to go for passes, but maybe a little bit beyond their ability right now. Is, even if you look at Colorado, look at these control passes that they're going through the midfield. Humble Potato just going to get completely annihilated. And unfortunate stuff, as that might have been the confidence goal for Canisius before heading out of this series. Despite that, Colorado going to walk away with this series in a dominant 3-0 fashion, despite Canisius's best efforts. Congrats to Colorado as they move to, I believe, 6-4 in the league and uh, that makes it so uh, i do believe uh, that uh, six and four is correct yeah they they've just been playing absolutely amazing i wouldn't look at that uh score line because in the last 10 games uh they've won nine of them and they won it against teams like marist they won it against teams uh against uh, fairfield and now canisius right and they took care of Canisius quite hand, uh, handily. And you look at how they, they took care of Fairfield and, uh, and Marist. And Marist had never been taken care of like that. Fairfield had never been taken care of like that. So yeah, the fact that Colorado here comes in handily isn't a surprise to me. Yeah, and honestly, when I look at the mechanics and the, the gameplay of a team like Colorado, I'm really curious to see how they will fare against the upper teams. If I remember... Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, um, yeah, I think, especially in that game, when you could see some potentials, maybe they just knew that they could play really well against Kinesis, but uh, you could see that they could get a little overconfident that their defense maybe wasn't... You know, super strong. They had some backboard defense. You know, they were doing the good fundamental stuff. They weren't really challenged as well. So I really want to see them be properly challenged the defensive zone because I think their offense can be great. But it's whether or not they can pull that off against a top team that'll matter. Yeah, exactly. And for Canisius, well, they they got a taste of uh, of a top team in Colorado's offense, and uh, it did not disappoint. Uh, uh, that was an absolute clinic, and uh, we will uh, go to a break real quick and uh, get on to an interview uh, with one of the players from the winning team. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here for the interview, and we're going to be here with Trix uh, from the winning University of Colorado team. How are you, my man? I'm very good. The win's a win. 
A win is a win, and it was uh, quite dominant indeed. Uh, the first game completely out of control, eight to three, uh, as uh, Seb said uh, a few times, a barn burner. Uh, the second game, three nothing. That one was, it seemed a little bit tougher. And game number three, just five goals in the first eighty seconds. Absolute clinic by you guys. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, came into this match knowing we felt we had the quality to to make this sort of performance and so it was just a matter of being confident making sure that we were consistent and we enjoyed playing this sort of high intensity gameplay so that we don't have to we're not concerned about conceding goals because we know for every single goal we'll concede we'll score three more in this sort of game that's now, uh, go ahead go ahead Sorry. yeah now, now you guys i believe with this win are moving on to six and four with the current record and I, I am kind of surprised by this a little bit because I see your gameplay and I see you guys are very comfortable with each other. I mean, there was that last goal in game one where you guys made that th insane three-man touch uh, in transition at the last like 30 seconds, which was crazy. Um, it was so quick. And so I see this kind of gameplay and I'm wondering, is is it just uh, without going to previous records, I know you have wins over Marist and Fairfield, who are both great teams. But I mean, is there any reason why you guys felt you might have struggled earlier on in the season? Or do you feel like you guys are really coming to your own right now with the roster swap? We certainly could be. Um, it's hard to say what it is exactly. We definitely had some tough teams um, earlier. And um, we were also figuring out who can play when. We were not playing with the starting three the same starting three all the time and at the beginning of this um year even not this semester we had only one person no well two people remaining and now that's only down to one person in flow who is uh on the roster still since last year well regardless i do hope that you do keep starving on the roster he was playing pretty crazy and i could see he was he was fishing for those ceiling shots so hard. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but either way, it seemed like you guys were having fun, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we love these sort of games. We like to play as fun as we can when we have the opportunity to, and this was one of those games. It definitely looked like you guys were having a field day out there. And, uh, I mean, since the spring split started, you guys have played 10 total games and won nine of them, uh, three up against Marist. You absolutely... You actually doubled their loss count, believe it or not, uh, for <laughs> for the season. That that's how that's how impressive that sweep was. You guys doubled their 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 loss count, and so um, the fact that you guys could come in and play that well at the start of the spring split, you guys are a scary team now, and uh, I hope you guys can appreciate that because you guys have a rough uh, rough road ahead of you guys for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we're looking forward to the challenge. We're not shying away from it. We're ready to compete and we'll do our best as always. Now, I do have one last question as, you know, we are uh, especially thinking more and more about playoffs as it comes along. There's a lot of really strong teams that are coming out, you know, within uh, collegiate. Obviously, I'm sure you guys are aware of the top teams with like UT Arlington and Delaware and all of them. Is there any particular matchup that you really you know, want to play, uh, whether it's a specific team, a specific player, or anything like that? Absolutely. Uh, top teams are always fun to play against. It's a, the best way to test yourself, really, as a team. Um, yeah, those teams, like you said, UTA, always a tough one. Delaware, I happened not to play against them. I was subbed out. And so I'm looking forward to see how they play, see how we can work around them and see if we can get better results compared to, uh, against to these teams that we have struggled against in the past. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. I look forward to casting more of you guys. Uh, you guys are absolutely fun to cast. So for sure. Uh, thanks so much, man, for the interview. And uh, we'll see you later. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. That being said, I think we're going to take a short break here and uh, move on to our last series for tonight. It's going to come up very shortly. I think in a short nine minutes time. Uh, we will be back with that series and uh, anything you want to say before we go on to this little break. Yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm really excited for Colorado. It just seems like they've leveled up so much, especially with adding Starvin. just seems they really, you know, uh, sure. It is against Canisius, uh, which you could argue is more of a mid-level team, but I mean, they were clicking really well. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how they play against guys 
like RIT, QTA, Delaware, all of these top teams and really see how the styles match, uh, meshes, uh, obviously with Starvin being added to the roster. So fantastic stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing more of them. I'm, I'm also looking forward to seeing more of, uh, this team because as he, as he said, they, they, they weren't really trying, right? They were having fun out there. They were, they were practicing team plays pretty much, right? They, 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 the way he talked about it, it almost sounded like a practice session, right? So when, uh, when push comes to shove, they, they outplay Canisius. And if they can outplay teams like that, they'll definitely make the playoffs. And with how they've been playing in this, uh, in the last uh, month, they'll definitely make a dent in the playoffs. They won't just get first rounded. That being said, let's go on to that little break. We'll be back in about eight minutes time for the 9 p.m. game. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the uh, to EGFC uh, season two. My name is Quantum Deathcat, and we have Seb over there who is uh, absolutely bopping to his tunes. How are you, my guy? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's showing those tunes I see. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. You just, uh, oh, uh, well, I could, uh, you know, I could throw on the sunglasses and I'll be straight vibing, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness, we we that uh, that is the look that the Colorado has at the current moment, right after uh, that significant victory over Canisius and uh, we might see the same thing out of DePaul right here wouldn't we yeah we have a DePaul University versus Niagara College and uh if you look at the records it's uh not fantastic uh you know DePaul I believe uh is six and three let me just double check that five and three excuse me and uh universe excuse me Niagara University is one and six so definitely not favored for the Niagara side. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's Rocket League. We come here to have fun. So hopefully DePaul will be able to give us a show uh, or Niagara will be able to shock us all and get the upset. I mean, DePaul have lost certain games that most people would think that they normally win. And so if, uh, if Niagara can pull off the upset here, we've seen a lot of upsets so far in the spring series. So uh, anything can happen, of course. Uh, that's why we have these kind of games, right? Or else we'd just give... Uh, the teams that have no chance or quote unquote no chance, right? Um, no chance, no chance. You know, <laughs> no, Niagara does have a chance. They just need the Paul to make a fifty billion mistakes. But yeah, uh, if uh, if the Paul do make all those mistakes, Niagara's gonna win. So there's a chance, and that's all you need in life is one little chance. There's a chance, but uh, you know we are. Just waiting for the players to get into the server. And and as uh, I can't exactly remember too many of DePaul's games off the top of my head, I wish I could, you know, and I, being that they are five and three, they have shown, you know, to be a very capable team. And once again, we do mention that as playoffs, you know, start to approach that teams are going to be looking as to where they might be seated for the playoffs. And so hopefully with this, if they do get a win under their belt here, that'll hopefully elevate them uh, to a better standing where they can actually start competing with more of the higher end teams. But that'll all depend on how they perform here against Niagara. So, you know, this is our last match of the night. We hope that it will be an entertaining one. Of course, our schedule has been a little messed up today thanks to, uh, you know, two different matches being super weird uh, so we'll see uh you know we will get those rescheduled for you for all the fans who wanted to see that but of course you know depaul just about ready to get in as we are still waiting here can i yell at them oh we are still waiting for niagara so hopefully they will be coming in of course we do have a 15 minute timer uh for the team to get in or else we uh will see a forfeit so i i suppose we can just talk about a little bit more about colorado and depaul and even take a look i guess at the broader standings uh, i don't think we have a standings graphic or anything like that yes, but... uh, not not a graph no but we do have a, a spreadsheet for these uh, and uh, i don't think they've updated since the um since the ninth week yeah so do we don't have a uh, season uh week 10s uh yeah. standings in there and definitely not uh week 11s but uh, i can go back and uh go check out what the has been up to uh since the spring uh, uh split uh they've uh, lost the paul has lost one game to san jose state in a five game tilt and yeah. afterwards they won in a four game tilt up against marist last week and now up against, obviously, uh, Niagara. Uh, they've been doing pretty okay so far, but uh, Niagara, let's see what they've been up to. They beat Quinnipiac uh, in Week 9, the, the comeback of uh, the spring split. And then afterwards, yeah, they just, I, I was guessing that one. They were, they were playing really well, honestly, uh, surprisingly. But uh, Quinnipiac just... Ah, I don't know. They they haven't been themselves recently. They they won one game against uh, Niagara. They uh, lost. They 